I've always loved ski ball, so today we're going to show you how I built my own version of this arcade classic. This video is sponsored by Craig Tools. More about them during the video. We're gonna start off making the jump. My dad cut these pieces out using his CNC mill and I'm going to attach them all together to make one solid continuous ramp jump thing. It's gonna be great. Each piece currently has six wooden tabs that I have to cut through, but I made sure none of them were on the side that's actually going to be the top for the jump where the ball will be traveling because that way I won't have any risk of cutting gouges or sanding it poorly. Just this side is already smooth and I don't have to rough it up. All right, check out those safety sandals. These holes are all just the right size that a quarter inch piece of all thread fits right in there without being too snug. Gotta line them all up. If I remember right, this actually took 28 pieces of jump all lined up to get the width that I needed. Alright, we've got ourselves a jump. Five minutes later. It's actually been a few months since I built the ramp and it's time to do some more work. In the meantime, I've kind of reorganized my entire garage so it doesn't hardly look like the same place, but it's way better for building so I'm very excited to do some stuff. Flawless. I made a 3D model of this whole ski ball then I broke that down and I took all the pieces and laid them out on just a four by eight sheet of board to try and figure out good nesting. So now what I'm actually gonna do is draw every piece onto the board and then I'll cut it out from there. Okay, that's fun. I love that. Frustrating, but I believe I have now solved the source of my frustration. Whew, okay. I got all the lines drawn. I, uh, I had messed up some of the stuff in the design phase, which of course made problems with like the patterning phase, which of course made more problems when I tried to bring them onto the drawing on wooden boards phase. I think I got it all figured out. Time to start cutting. Time to actually use the track saw that I was excited about. Let's do this. As much stress as not getting my measurements right caused me before, I swear the Craig track saw took away that much stress from the rest of this build. I love this thing. I've got some first pieces cut out, now it's time to cut out the ramp. The actual part, you roll the ball down and instead of plywood, I am using MDF just because I want that surface to be like as smooth and even as possible. Plywood's pretty flat and smooth, MDF even better, so I'm gonna do that and then it's gonna have a frame of some two by fours underneath it. Smooth ramp. So this is our jump, this is our ramp. The ramp leads to the jump. You can see how well that fits in. I have the gap the right width, but where the actual all thread and bolts are, the wood is just the tiniest fraction of an inch narrower from one end to the other. So right here, it fits. But if you go in between the two bolts, the wood is bulging, the wood of the jump is bulging just 16th, maybe an eighth of an inch, probably less than that. And that is too tight. So I'll probably just do some sanding work to take it down in between or some sanding work on the ramp. Now I don't own a jointer, but I want a jointed edge on all of my two by fours here. Fortunately, my dad owns one and he lives close enough by that I can just use his. Thanks, Dad. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, jointers are terrifying machines and you should be scared of them. Whew. All right, with all the lovely joint, what I don't know what you call that, jointed surfaces on these two by fours, time to attach them to the ramp. So I marked on one surface of the MDF where the two x fours would go, and then I drilled through that direction. Then I loosely attached the two x fours, flipped it over, drilled back through so the two x fours were pre-drilled, and then attached the screws. There might have been a better way to do this. With the platform nice and sturdy, it's time to figure out how I am attaching the jump to the ramp. I have some ideas, and part of the structural element is actually gonna be the side rails that go down the sides. Those aren't there yet, but I want to put those in after I have the jump attached. So what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna trim off some of the extra metal. I'm going to sand on the sides of the rails and on the side of the platform, and try and get it all to meet up just really nicely in the slot that's cut for it. It's gonna be a lot of making things up. I will say that while the track saw did a great job on this, I don't really think this is what it's meant for. Think I got it fitting really nicely. This piece of two by four right here, this is actually going to work as sort of a shelf for the front of the jump. I'm gonna get some screws driven in. I'm gonna start by just doing a couple on the sides. So I do have a gap that goes around the jump where it meets the ramp. Is it ideal? No but I'm prototyping this as I'm building it. So unfortunately, little things are gonna pop up. Well, that's not the ideal angle. Oh, all right, I got the ramp and the jump. Now we just need everything else. So we've got some attachment at the front. We're going to have more attachment on the sides. This is one of the interior side panels, and that's gonna go right about there. Oh, that's good. I'm liking this. Yeah, that's gonna go there. They'll have more side panels on the outside. It goes down more. Mm. Time to start building the sides of the ramp, and before I start putting pieces together, I have a modification I need to do to one of the boards that I cut, and that's to put the ball retrieval hole. You know, when you're playing, you gotta, that's what I need to cut. So I've marked it out on this board right here. I'm gonna use a hole saw, cut a couple circles, and then I'm gonna connect just with a jigsaw. This Craig pocket hole tool made super easy work of all of the joinery, and it's crazy strong. As always, a huge thank you shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon. If you're interested in joining our Patreon supporters, the link for that is down in the description.
Obviously, there's a lot of ways I could have made the legs for this table, but I really liked the idea of making them out of plywood. So much of this build was already plywood. I liked going along with that theme, and I thought this way I could make them hollow, which is a little bit lighter. It saves some weight if I have to move it around. I tried making a wood gap filler using wood glue and sawdust, and I think I just used the wrong sawdust. I ended up just buying some wood putty. Now a lot of these pocket holes just aren't visible and I don't have to worry about them, but the ones that you can see through the ball retrieval hole are, so I'm gluing in dowels to fill them up and make it smooth. And I'm gonna do that a little bit more on some outside bits as well. Now it's time to start building the main box, you know, the, the back part where the point target is. Using the Craig track saw, I cut out matching side pieces and the top and back piece. Once again, using pocket holes as my joinery, it's it's just an easy way to go. It's This is plywood, I'm not trying to do anything fancy, I just want it to be sturdy and hold together. To make the ball target board, I needed precision work for the spacing and the layout. Back to my dad and his CNC, so we programmed it to cut all of the point holes in the exact right spacing and size, and frankly, they're much nicer circles than I would get using a jigsaw or even a hole saw. As you can see, I've still got the holes in the middles here, so I'm just gonna use a jigsaw, cut those out, and then I'll clean up the little whatever's left. Even more pocket holes. Now here on these side rails where I had already attached multiple pieces of wood together, the larger pocket hole jig didn't fit, so I'm clamping on the smallest Craig jig to finish the pocket holes. We didn't show it, but I did recess some holes into the sideboards so that the bolts on the jump wouldn't bump into them. That's more like it. And just like the pocket holes inside the ball retrieval spot, all these side rails have visible holes and we don't want that, so filling them up. Now eventually this target board is going to be permanently attached in here, but for now, because I still have some things I need to figure out, this being a prototype, I'm just gonna set up some little things on the side that let me just kind of rest it in there and it's just gonna be something I can put in and take out. Uh, because I still have to get all of the electronics and everything in here and I'm probably going to want to be able to take things in and out to access those. Let's get this up, at least temporarily. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you, past self. You thought it was going to be temporary, turns out it's actually just really convenient to be able to lift the whole ramp out. Leaving it.
suspect I can set it on there and it will just slide. feet for the ramp. So far those feet are actually just sitting underneath it. I figure I could actually attach them. They'll do more that way. Plus I need to do other builds and measures and then got to get feet on this and the other hat. We're doing feet now. Note to self, fire the guy who makes these captions. With the legs attached, it was now time to install better, more durable feet on the bottom of the legs. We don't want the wood to get chipped or damaged if we have to move things. Just enough clearance. I should make sure that a switch gets flipped every time. Click, 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 click. Now, wood balls jumping off of a ramp and hitting a wood board is super loud, and over time could damage the boards after a lot of use. So I found some rubber padding to install on the back of the whole board to just dampen everything, cushion the blow and all that. The rubber sheet that I used for this was like a horse stall floor mat, and while it's definitely durable, will hold up forever to use. I regret this choice because it is insanely heavy. It's half an inch thick of super dense rubber. It was way hard to cut, it was hard to machine, it made the whole backboard like two or three times as heavy, and I really should have found something way thinner, like a quarter or even an eighth of an inch thick, instead of half an inch thick. I actually reached out on Instagram asking if people knew specific places that I could buy white rubber sheet like this. I think I went with 3 16 of an inch thick, and this is a food grade nitrile rubber. I, I don't need it to be food grade, obviously, but that's the only way to get it in white, which I did want. To fasten these rubber strips into rings, I just developed these little custom brackets that rivet the rubber ends so it all stays together. It uses Chicago screws instead of rivets, but the effect is the same. The rubber that I'm using for the rings is not quite as rigid. It's much more flexible than the original rings, but those I think were custom made by Goodyear and this was as close as I could get. I'm pretty happy with it. Got all of the rings in place and this thing is looking really good. Just a couple more spots till I get to a good like playable point. I've got this foam backing right here. It's just set right there right now. So I gotta glue that down and I gotta attach something on the front. But at that point, it should be playable. <laughs> that worked great.
Now the whole ramp and jump are actually going to be covered in a layer of cork that should help smooth everything out and just make it a little bit less bouncy, which is great for a nice smooth roll, but I still wanted to have as few imperfections under the cork as possible. Again, I should have used a lighter weight rubber. This would probably be a one person operation if I had. stuck somewhere somehow. This hole it doesn't have screws, so as balls have dropped into it, it pushes the plastic out. <laughs> so it dropped down far enough. This is now working. It's in a fully functional state. If I want to keep scoring manually, I can play on it just like this, but that's not the goal. So we're going to have part two, and in that we are going to add some other fancy things. We're going to add electronics. There's actually going to be a screen right here for keeping track of your score. And the whole thing, apart from just being decorated, is actually going to have a really cool and bizarre twist to it, which I think you're really going to like. So make sure you're subscribed. Come back for part two. I think you're going to love it. Thank you to Craig Tools for sponsoring today's video. The track saw, the pocket hole jigs, and the adaptive cutting system I used were absolutely instrumental in building today's project. Check the links in the description to get your own today.